Hi, I'm Greg Berman, Chatham's Director of Natural Resources. The Department of Natural Resources comprises five individual town divisions that each play a significant role in the protection of public health and the natural environment. The department oversees the management of marine resources, our waterways, and the marine infrastructure of Chatham. Today, our Coastal Resource Director, Ted Keon, provides a closer look at a recent project coordinated with the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries and the AmeriCorps program in an effort to maintain the waterways used by diadromous fish when migrating. Ted Keon, Coastal Resource Director in Chatham. Uh, we're here at the Herring Run uh, off of Riders Cove. It's uh, Chatham's basically primary and main functioning Herring Run. It runs between uh, the sort of beginning of uh, Riders Cove under Route 28, comes up to this natural stream bed, runs into Stillwater Pond, and then again continues on into Lover's Lake. This was one of our annual maintenance projects. Uh, fortunate to have a group from AmeriCorps. They help us out to do a lot of the pruning, cleaning out of the stream bed. And then we've also got our Harry Warden, uh, David Peterson, and Brad Chase, who's the Division Fisheries uh, person who is basically in charge of all of the Massachusetts herring runs and Andrews Fish uh, passageways. I'm Brad Chase. I work for the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries as a diatomous fish biologist. I'm project leader for the diatomous fish project. Diatomous means those fish that switch habitats to complete their life history. Most come from the ocean in the spring to spawn in fresh water. They're not a very common species. We have about 1% of the fish on the planet are diadromous. In Massachusetts, we have about 15 species, and all but one of these are anadromous, meaning they're born in freshwater. They head out to the ocean to mature and grow. The American eel is the opposite. It's catadromous. It's born out of the Sargasso Sea. It comes to freshwater habitats to live and grow. So we're very happy to have these fish here. Right now, we have American eel present here below Stillwater Pond in Chatham and, and the alewife will be coming up fairly soon. And we also have nearby, we have some white perch on Cape Cod, Atlantic tom cod, and a few other diatomous species. So my agency works with towns and property owners to provide passage for these fish. These fish need help every spring. They're coming up. Sometimes we have tree falls, debris jams, other blockages that prevent them from passing. So we work with towns like Chatham and property owners to open passage. This side here has the benefit of AmeriCorps being here today. So we have about 15 young men and women working with AmeriCorps to provide passage for these fish. It's a great, great cooperative project. In the past, we replaced the fishways below Stillwater Pond and Lover's Lake in 2011. That was done with the town of Chatham providing materials and the DMF fishway crew did the work for about $750 per fishway. Last fall, we were here with the town of Chatham as well and we repaired two concrete weirs in the channel and added fiber rolls to reduce erosion and try to give a little more definition to the channel these fish need to pass up in. So, very good example of a cooperative project between the state and local partners. Hey, hi, I'm uh, David Peterson. I'm the uh, local herring warden for the town of Chatham. Um, I've had uh, lifelong experience with, the, uh, with this particular run. Uh, my mother first brought me down here in 1979 and I was amazed by it. That's when the Myers owned the property and. And then I came back in uh, 1986 for a scout project for one of my uh, service projects, and we redid the run at that time. Um, so far, the last few years, we've had an incredible run. Uh, the fish have been running at night and during the day at, uh, at low tide and at high tide, so it's hard to keep track of them. But from what I heard last year, um, across the way on Old Commerce, there's a larger culvert. The neighbors were woken up in the middle of the night saying they heard noise and there was thousands of fish going through the culvert underneath the road, which were splashing and making a lot of noise, which was good. That's a good sign. The last couple of years, they've been uh, running a little bit earlier than normal. Um, I keep the temperature gauge with me and I test the uh, temperature of the water on both sides. The fish tend to be a little bit more active uh, in and around 50 to 52 degrees. I checked it last week and I think we're at 43 to 44 degrees right now, so it's still a little early and cold. Um, overall, this, this run project that we've been doing with AmeriCorps, they've, uh, they've helped and assist the management of cleaning it up because only one guy could do so much. By keeping these fish going and moving, it, it helps all the other fish offshore survive longer. It's part of the food chain. 
and it's an important aspect. Uh, last fall, we had a Division of Marine Fisheries with the assistance of uh, Brad Chase. The state came in to uh, redo our concrete embutments because they were at, they were not, the water was blowing past them, so it wasn't, they weren't working efficient, but they reconcreted them, cleaned up the banks, planted new indigenous uh, growth, new grass. We even put blueberry uh, bushes along the edge just to keep it more natural. Um, the predation that we have is basically the birds and maybe a few uh, raccoons and recently now we have fisher, fisher cats at them too. So, um, but the state did a very wonderful job in, in, in getting the water at the right height as far as getting the concrete uh, embutments put in. Today our goal is to have AmeriCorps come in um, they usually come in either once or tw uh, once every two years, but there's a group of volunteers that they uh, this is part of their service project, I believe. And right now we're just digging out some of the uh, shallow spots so the fish have a little bit more depth, so the predation won't be able to get to them too easily. Um, we're cutting back minimal cutback on the edges of the uh, of the uh, creek because we don't want to take too much because every time we go to cut, it grows back thicker. Um, but it does help the flow. It help helps me maintain the herring and, and, and easier, easier to walk through and inspect the run to make sure there's no other fallen debris or, or trees are in the, in the mix of everything. We've had a lot of uh, erosion, storms, ice, snow, wind, rain, you name it, we've got thrown into the, into the grinder about that as far as Mother Nature goes. But we managed to uh, handle and uh, correct everything and keep, keep the ball rolling basically.